Hey gang, with Invictus just around the corner, I thought it might be cool to go in and kind of throw in some wild speculation on what ships I think will be dropping in Invictus, which ships we'll hear about, and which ones probably have no chance at all of being in Invictus. So if that sounds good, well, let's get this. Okay, so I thought that this might be a fun one to do a couple weeks out from Invictus. Uh, so this is going to start with the ships that I think are going to be most likely in Invictus and the ones that are least likely. And I'm going to end it with, let's say, three ships that I think are almost certainly not going to be in Invictus that other people have said there are. But I do have a uh, silver lining there. So stick around to the end and let's get into it. Okay. So first one up, this one's obvious, is the F7A Mark II. We've gotten the F7C Mark II. The whole event around Xenothreat was supposed to give people access to this. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about Invictus real quick, just in case you're new to Star Citizen and you don't know this or you don't know the lore behind Invictus. Kind of think of it as Veterans Day for the UEE. Uh, it's sort of where the Navy comes out and flexes their muscles and, you know, shows all their cool ships. Uh, outside of lore for CIG, it's a big ship sale. So it's probably one of the bigger ship sales outside of IAE at the end of the year and uh, SITCON itself. Um, they put all the big military ships for sale. So think uh, Idris, Javelin, Polaris, Kraken, all of those will come up for sale at some point during this. And pretty much all of the other rare military ships you'll see there too. Now, the fact that it is military focused as opposed to the IAE, which is just kind of everything and typically has an industrial ship is kind of its focus typically. Um, that kind of narrows down what I would expect to see in Invictus. And so the F7A is the obvious one to drop at Invictus because we just had a big Xenothreat event, which is going to give people access to purchase the F7A. Now, will they have the F7A for purchase outside of that event? Yeah, probably, but they'll probably delay it a couple months just to kind of give the people that went through all the missions in the event a chance to get it. Uh, will it be a free CCU if they did that? Kind of doubt it, but maybe that would be really cool if CIG did that. Just don't hold your breath for it. So the F7A, I think that that is probably the first and most obvious ship that will be in Vixis. Let's go to the next one. So next one up that you probably guessed from the intro video there is, of course, the Retaliator. Now, the Retaliator has some issues, which I'll go over here. So you can sit in the cockpit. You can get in the upper turret, the lower turret, the starboard side turret, the port side turret, the lower turret in the back. This thing has almost as many turrets as a hammerhead. To fully crew a tally, you need six people, uh, which is a lot. And that's not even including the person that would be acting as the bomber, which at the moment is the pilot. But anyway, the Retaliator, the new version is going to be in. Uh, do not be surprised if it drops some of those turrets. Uh, in fact, if you look right here, that is probably the new Retaliator. I'm not seeing two turrets on the wing. And granted, it's a really small image, and we're not going to go in there and enhance and enhance and enhance, but I would expect them to make the Retaliator a three-person ship, so give it two turrets and the pilot. But with the Retaliator is going to come modularity, which is a huge, huge thing. So the Retaliator is supposed to be a bomber, yes, kind of a large stealth bomber, sort of think like a B-1B, uh, but it's also supposed to be modular, and there is a cargo variant, there is a dropship variant, and there's probably going to be other variants that we're going to find along the way. Don't be surprised if those sales come up at the same time that they release the new tally. And I would expect, this is kind of where we get into a little bit of speculation of when I think 323 
X will drop. Uh, I'm expecting 323 to drop to the PU within the next week or two weeks would be pushing it, but I would expect there to be a patch, whether it's 323.x or not is another question, but I would expect the Retaliator to drop with IAE no matter what the patch is at that point. Uh, so I would fully expect the Retaliator to be part of the IAE patch. Like I said, these wouldn't be very controversial to start with. So the Zeus is a possibility. So this is the ship that's about roughly a competitor with the uh, Freelancer in the RSI lineup. Uh, they are cruising through this thing. Like I wasn't expecting to see this thing until around September. It looks like they're probably going to roll it out in the very near future. So uh, the interdiction one, a lot like the Scorpius Antares, it's got both an EMP and an interdiction module, one that will pull you out of uh, quantum quantum interdiction module i think that's what it's called uh but it's got one of those so the whole back area here is just that so it's actually even got less geometry than the cargo variant uh, so i would actually if they're getting far enough along on this i would expect them to drop this one and probably this one, this is the cargo variant. Now, the one that they probably will wait until the end of the year for would be the exploration kind of, I forget what they call it. Actually, I guess I could look it up right now. Hang on. The ES is the other one. Uh, that's the one that I would expect to see later in the year. I think they'll roll out the interdiction and the cargo variants uh, to begin with. And then they'll roll out, probably at Invictus, they'll roll out both of these. Uh, it is a sale. So they're going to try to sell as many ships as they can. So the next one up is the slides that we saw from uh, CitizenCon, or kind of the mobile ones here. And I've just frozen it here, but it says in the next 12 months, these, we've kind of seen uh, teasers of them. They are definitely space bikes, uh, very small ones. Uh, some people think they're Mirai, who the hell knows? Um, Mirai's as good a guess as any, little racer pods. Uh, those, I wouldn't be shocked if they're coming in Invictus, just because they're small and it's going to be an easy win. And the next one, I think, is another possibility, again, kind of moving down the ladder of likelihood. These are a possibility. I would put it at 60-40. This is the other one. So this is one that uh, I think the Mirai Raptor, uh, while it was an April Fool's troll by CIG, I think that this might actually be the Mirai Raptor. And they just did that to troll uh, Pipeline. And I would not be shocked if this one was coming in Invictus, uh, because if it is supposed to be a heavy fighter, that would make a lot of sense to drop that kind of ship. But now you can sort of see that the loading up of ships is getting pretty heavy, but it would make sense to have a couple concept sales. So the bike in this, and then have a bunch of sales of existing ships like the Retaliator. Uh, but yeah, this one, I think uh, this one's probably 50-50. I wouldn't be shocked if they dropped this for Alien Week instead, since it's Mariah, it's going to have a lot of Jian tech, tech wouldn't be ridiculous. Uh, but let's go on. So we got a sneak peek uh, a couple weeks back, and I think it was the, either the monthly report or the uh, weekly updates. Uh, and it was a picture of an RSI seat. And there are two ships that I think this could be. Obviously, the first one would be the Aurora. Uh, this one is one that people are kind of pointing to as the obvious choice. I've heard a few content creators sort of say it's definitely the Aurora. The seat is too small to be anything else. Uh, one thing I would kind of pushback on is that the Aurora did receive an update a few years back, like five years back or so. Uh, and it's so small and simple that it doesn't really need a huge update to kind of bring it up to modern standards. Uh, it is totally possible that they're going to release a, what, 2954 version of the Aurora like they did for the, um, for the F7. I don't think that would make as much sense for Invictus, but something that 
would make sense for Invictus is the Connie. So if the Connie got a rework, it's one that has badly, badly needed it. Unlike the Aurora, which you can actually get in and out of, and it kind of, it, it fits its role as a starter ship. The Connie, when you walk through it, just feels like an old model. It almost feels like it's from a different game. And really, it kind of is. Like the current model for the constellation sort of the interior hallway and everything came around uh i believe they did the rework when delamar was dropped in the game so like five years back thereabouts so it is an old old model and it really shows on the inside most of the things don't work the table doesn't come up uh just the whole interior doesn't match the modern rsi aesthetic so if you look at this and you look at this they don't even look like they're the same manufacturer so i would not be shocked if the constellation kind of got a dorito pass uh but anyway, that's kind of the two dark horses. Now we're kind of in 50-50 territory and reading an awful lot into the seat. <laughs> Just a picture of a seat. Uh, so let's push on to the ones that are a little bit more speculative. So yeah, this one is a super dark horse. So uh, I would we're almost certainly going to see an Idris at IAE, and I would fully, or not IAE, at Invictus, and I would fully expect us to have like a tour. We are about 90% certain that the next level of or the next mission in the Xenothreat series is facing off against the new Idris. So a, a much tougher nut to crack than previously. Like previously the Idrises would pop in for the old Xenothreat mission and they'd be blown up in a couple minutes and really the problem was dealing with all the fighters. Uh, the Idris itself wasn't really a threat at all. Uh, if you held still and you were in a big ship, it would pop you, but other than that, really wasn't all that scary. New one's scary, uh, especially if it's running on servers that are getting 60 frames per second. Could be in trouble. Uh, but I would think the Idris is going to come up. Now, are they going to go back on their word and give the players that have purchased an Idris access to the Idris? Are they going to say, okay, yeah, we said that we were going to wait until we launch uh, Squadron 42, but Merry Christmas a few months early. Here you go. Um, it's possible. It's possible. Uh I would I would put this one at 3070 so unlikely they would go back on their word but considering that they're already putting the Idris in the game holding it back for Squadron 42 doesn't really make a lot of sense and it might even be counter to the marketing for that game because if people are walking around on the Idris right now this is a huge ship and that is an experience you cannot get I don't think in any other game out there right now so you're gonna have say six months before they start releasing squadron 42 like actually going big on the marketing and stuff like that you're going to have a bunch of buzz right now about look at what star says and just did. look at this gigantic ship players are going to be flying around trolling in it you're certainly going to have people doing the 890 thing where they're just soloing an idris through it and just getting it ganked or having people board it and learn how to get on and off this thing uh because i can tell you what the idris is going to be the flagship for a fair number of large orgs out there so you're going to be having uh pirate orgs like the mongrels out there really wanting to practice how to crack this thing uh because it's piloted by players that's a whole different story but anyway invictus we're definitely going to see it you will definitely be able to walk around on it uh, some people at um, the Xenothreat event will certainly be stealing them and walking around on them and doing stuff. You might even have to invade it to kill Xenothreat and win that mission. But will they release it to players? I don't know. Uh, again, 
low chance, but there is a chance. So let's go into the ones that I think have a zero chance of being in Invictus. All right, so this is the galaxy. This is the big brother of the Zeus. Uh, I have heard several content creators just <laughs> the ones that kind of glaze over the the notes and stuff like that, the patch notes, or not the patch notes, but the weekly and monthly reports. And they're like, oh, the galaxy is past white box or something. So it's going to be in. The galaxy is a big ship. This thing is... Uh, around Carrick size, maybe a little bit smaller, but regardless, they aren't going to build this thing like they did with the Carrick. All of the screens have got to work. It's going to be set up for engineering because they don't want to have to go back and redo the thing in the air. The docking rings are going to work. All of the buttons have got to work. That kind of technical art is going to take a long, long time. So the Galaxy still put it at IE at the end of the year or... Um, or even says and gone. Uh, it looks like it's coming along faster than we expect, but a month? No, it is not going to drop in a month. Uh, if it does, I would be absolutely thrilled and shocked in equal parts. So the Galaxy, I'm calling it not going to be at IAE. So this one's kind of sad because I do love this ship. They're definitely going to sell this ship at Invictus. Uh, will they drop it to us? So this is another one that is in gray box right now. It's not overly complicated. The thing that I think will hold the Legionnaire up is the fact that hacking isn't in the game yet. And that is the primary focus of this ship. The ship could be used as a drop ship, but its primary focus is hacking its way into the docking ports of other ships and landing on them, forcibly putting troops on them. Uh, I'll show you another picture that shows that. So yeah, if you haven't seen the Legionnaire before, here it is. So and actually, is that an Idris? I think it is boarding an Idris. That's kind of cool. Uh, Maybe a Reclaimer? No, I think it's an Idris. Uh, but yeah, it, it puts this little proboscis in there, but as it's doing that, the co-pilot in here is hacking the other ship and forcing this door to open and accept it as a docking port. Uh, that gameplay isn't in yet. Could they drop it? They might, because again... It could just be a drop ship. It carries something like 10 to 15 guys. Uh, it's really heavily armored, but I think they'll hold this one back until they have the hacking game loop and they'll release this ship in the hacking game loop at the same time for Synergy. So the Legionnaire, I don't think will be in IA, or at least I don't think it'll be released in IA. Uh, will they sell them? Hell yes. Will they talk about it? Absolutely. And now the ship that I think that they will talk about the most, let's get into that. Yeah, I'm going to get some hate comments for this one. The Polaris is not dropping at IE, and the content creators that need that are saying that they need to stop. Like I'm, I'm starting to hear them get echoed in the comments in the game, and that is never a good sign. Where they're all like, "Polaris is coming in a month," and everybody's like, "Wow, really?" And they'll be like, "Yep, guaranteed." And this is in the chat in the game and I'll, I'll kind of push back and I'll be like uh source and <laughs> eventually it just comes down to I just really want to see it in the game which I get this ship is amazing the Polaris just visually if I wasn't absolutely married to the BMM the merchant man uh Polaris is like a strong candidate for a backup I mean, this thing is just straight up nasty. This thing was made to kill the Idris and ships like that. Uh, whether you're a pirate org or a lawful org that hunts pirates, this is the ship you want because this is the thing that's going to take out the other party's capital ship or ships. Like, this thing sitting out there in the dark somewhere is was going to keep org leaders up at night so the polaris is an awesome awesome ship but it's kind of like the galaxy on steroids every single screen has to work in it it's going to have to have 
the working screens for engineering, all of that has got to be up and running. And they're probably not going to do that until they've tested out the engineering loop in the PTU for a month or two. So they're going to slow walk this ship because this one really does kind of have to be perfect when it lands. All the buttons everywhere have to work. Nothing on this one can be faked. This one will be as close to gold standard as they can get it. So just think of all the mechanics that aren't in the game yet. And this ship has to account for that. So the longer that they wait and the more mechanics are implemented before it is created or before it's finished, that's less than Things they have to do later down the line because if you update something like the aurora it's going to take a dev working for maybe a month to do that or less once they have all the assets in there imagine how long it would take a dev to do an update on a ship of this size and complexity a long time so this is a ship that they want to build once they don't want to have a situation like the reclaimer or the carrick or the 890 less so the 890 but definitely the carrick and the reclaimer where they have to go back and basically just gut the thing to make it for all of the modern mechanics so this thing's going to come out as close to a gold standard as we get we're not seeing the polaris at invictus now i'm going to add the caveat or the silver lining they are definitely going to talk about the Polaris and sell it at Invictus. We're probably going to have a Friday show, maybe a Thursday show that's completely dedicated or at least mostly dedicated to the Polaris and whatever new ships they drop. But they are definitely going to talk about the Polaris because it is a crazily popular ship. And so now that I've pissed everyone off, catch me next time. Mm -hmm.